Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 26. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we are going to finish off our animation, or at least for now, so we'll make sure that the player is facing in the correct direction and we'll also fix up our bounding boxes. But first let's look at what we did last time and do a tiny bit of tidying up. So in the last episode we separated the position code from our entity code to create a new class called position. And this really contains all of our logic for um, keeping the world position, so the x, y, and z position, and the drawing or screen positions of our player um, all up to date. And one change I'd like to make right away is this method called, sorry, the position class currently has an update method, but it doesn't work the same as our other update methods. So it's not something that we call from um, the update inside our entity, for instance. And it doesn't really uh, work the same way. So most of our update methods just take in the game state and they make some kind of decision. Um, whereas this update method is called every time we change the x, y, and z positions. So for that reason, I'm going to rename it to set position. And now we just need to update the name. So let's just look for everywhere where we've used position update. And we'll replace that with position um, set position. And hopefully everything should still work. No protemptical method, set position. Ah, of course. We also need to change the signature on the instance as well. So set position is equal to set position. Okay, and now everything is working as it was last episode. But things are named a bit more clearly. So this episode we have a couple of fixes to do before we can say that our sprite sheet and animation code is done for the moment. So the first fix, nice and easy, is to fix the size of our bounding boxes. So if we look at them with debug mode turned on, we can see that our bounding box is quite a bit bigger for our player than it should be. And that's because we're still using the size of the image, even though the image has more than one sprite in it. So if we take a look at our where are we? Source, Assets, Sprites, Adventurer. If we take a look at our Adventurer, our Adventurer actually has two sprites on the sprite sheet now. So we need to update spritesheet.lua and sprite.lua so that we always get the correct size when we create the bounding box. And that's inside of our entity class. So if we take a look at what our bounding box is doing, inside of entity create you see that we create a bounding box or a rectangle and we currently just call sprite.image get width and sprite image get height which is okay for our regular sprites but not for our sprite sheet so for both of them we're going to come into our create method and we'll create a new property and we'll just call that size for now and on our sprite sheet, it will be equal to sprite size, which we already have as an argument. And for our sprite, where's our create method gone down here? So instance.size is equal to the image, and then we'll just call get width for now. And we'll assume that all of our sprites are square for the moment, and if that changes, we can come back and fix it later. So now we should just be able to use sprite.size and sprite.size. Okay, now our bounding box is the correct size, um, but our player is in slightly the wrong position, and this is because very similarly actually, inside of our sprite sheet, we currently set our offsets for our image. So uh, these offset values are what we were using to make sure our sprite was centered. Um, we currently set them using the size of the image, not the size of the individual sprite. So let's 
just update this to be self.size over 2. And we don't need to update it in sprite, but we may as well just to be consistent. And there we go, our bounding box is back in the correct place even when we're using a sprite sheet. So the next thing I'd like to do is make it so the player faces the correct direction, because if we run our game of moment, they walk forwards fine, but if they walk backwards, they just, uh, or they walk backwards but they don't face in the correct direction, they don't face left when they're heading left. So let's, um, let's fix that. So the way we're going to do that is inside of our position class we're going to add a new um, a new property and we'll just call that property left and it will be true if they are facing left and false if not so we'll say inst.left equals left here there we go and where we're going to use that property is inside of our spot sheet or first of all inside of our entity when we do our drawing we'll pass in an extra value to our draw function um, and this will be a boolean telling our draw function whether we should rotate or flip the image um, sort of mirror the image in the x-axis direction and that will just be self.position.left so if this is true, we want to flip our image because our image, all of our images in our game are right facing. So we'll pass that in there, then inside of our sprite sheet, we'll add in an extra argument to draw called flipped. Now we need a value, uh, which we'll call x scale. And we're going to say if flipped, then x scale is going to be equal to negative 1. Otherwise it's just going to be equal to 1. And the way we use this is our draw method here or love.graphics.draw can take a few extra arguments. So it takes a value for rotation which we'll just set to be 0. So that's rotation. It also takes a value for um, the x scale and the y scale. So the x scale is if we want to draw our image bigger or smaller in the x direction we can use a value. We can also pass in a negative value if we want to mirror our image which is exactly what we want to do. So we'll pass in x scale and we'll also pass in y, oh sorry just 1 because we don't want to scale in the y direction so 1 should be fine. So now we can see that everything is still the same but nothing is broken so we should be in a good position to start using this value and we should also add it to our sprite class as well. So exactly the same, pass in a flipped value here, say local x scale is equal to 1 unless flipped is set, x scale equals minus 1 and and we already have a rotation value, so we just need our x scale value scale and our y scale value, which will be 1. So now we just need a way of telling our position class to change the value of that boolean, of the left boolean. So we'll create a couple of extra methods, one called face left. These will be instance methods, so they need self and one called face right. Function self and so for face left we'll say self dot left equals true and for face right we'll say self dot right oh sorry self dot left equals false. And let's just make sure these methods are attached to the instance when we create the instance of our position. So face left equals face left and instance dot face right equals face right. There we go. Now inside of our keyboard movement
if the right key is down, we want to say self dot, sorry, not self, uh, entity, entity dot position face right. And if the left key is pressed, we want to say entity dot position face left. Now let's give this a go. Okay, there we have it. So our player entity now mirrors in the correct direction, but they are not in the same place. Uh, so we draw our image backwards if it's mirrored. And the way we're going to fix this is we're going to change the way we do our offsets. So our off we can also pass in our offset values as two extra arguments at the end here. X offset and Y offset, which means we no longer need to use them here. And if we pass our values in like that, then the framework will just work it out for us. And if our image is flipped, it will still apply the offsets correctly. So let's also do that um, for our sprite as well as our sprite sheet. X scale, Y scale. Then we want our X. Oops x offset and y offset. And we no longer need to add our offsets up here. Let's give that a try. There we go. So the final thing to do uh, for our flipping code is to make our punch actually um, appear on the correct side of the player. So we can see, or we can't see very well, but we can see the bounding box appear, but if we go into main.lua and set debug mode to false, false save, we can see that even if we are facing uh, the other way, we still punch, or we now punch behind us. So that's easy enough to fix. Using the code we've added, we can come into our player.lua. Inside of action one, we already, uh, sorry, go a bit slower. Inside of action one, we already pull out the position. And we can use the um, left and right from the position to decide which way our punch should be facing. So pos.left. The other thing we need to do is change this value here. This is how far in front of the player the, um, the punch entity should appear, uh, which is fine if they're facing forwards, but if they're facing backwards, we actually need it to appear behind them. So very similar to um, our X scale of the way we handled that, we're going to say local, uh, we'll call this punch offset is going to be equal to, let's say 10 to start with, um, and we'll say if position dot left, then punch offset is actually going to be equal to, let's say minus 12, see how that looks. And then we'll just use our punch offset value down here. There we go, we can now punch backwards as well as forwards. Okay, so that really brings us to the end of getting our basic um, animation sorted. So we can now use sprite sheets to have an animated character that walks, and we can use x-axis flipping to make, or mirroring, uh, to make our player face in whichever direction they're moving. So we're now in a good position to add in a couple of extra animations if we wanted to, or even a couple of other characters which use the same techniques to move differently. Um, so this is the end of the animations, or at least the introduction to animations. In the next episode, we'll be tackling something new. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.